power in digital circuits. I am considering that I have a synchronous digital circuit, basically some kind of a box. It has some inputs, some outputs, and it is driven by a clock signal. Okay? And this clock essentially has some frequency associated with it, which I will call F. Okay? Now, inside this digital circuit, there are going to be registers. These are all controlled by the clock signal. What I mean by controlled by the clock signal is this clock signal somehow is connected to all of these registers. And of course, you know, the register behavior itself says that whenever there is a clock edge, the data is going to tran be transferred from input to output. Okay. And for the time being, I'm just assuming that, you know, these are all edge triggered, uh, positive edge triggered, whatever it doesn't matter. Uh, if you have level triggered latches and so on, the behavior can change a little bit. I don't want to get into that. You can still do a similar kind of analysis there, but you know, some things will change. There is also in addition to those uh, registers, combinational elements, right, which I have drawn as circles over here. And those lines that are there inside the circuit essentially are the nets or the wires that connect the different elements together. right? And now, of course, what we have is each combinational element is assumed to have some fixed propagation delay. In reality, what will happen is even the wires themselves have certain propagation delay. And, you know, you can do some standard static timing analysis, critical path algorithms. And based on that, you will be able to find out that, you know, some path in this circuit is the critical path. And the total delay along that path, that is the sum of the delays of all the elements. Over here, I've shown only the combinational elements. In practice, even the wires also need to be added. That delay is going to be the critical path. Okay. Some such, some path inside the circuit will be the critical path. I have drawn this one. It may not be, you know, uh, I, it's not like I've done any analysis over here. I've just drawn something to as an illustrative example. Okay, so if you can find the critical path in the circuit, important point to remember about this critical path is that it is equal to the sum of the delays on each of those elements and as I discussed a little earlier the delay through a gate right, is going to be proportional to the capacitance of that gate okay so in other words the way to look at it would be the, this flip-flop over here is driving this combinational logic gate okay what that means is the output of the flip-flop has to send enough current into or you know as a discharge enough current from the d1 uh, the gate which is marked with d1 so that the output of the gate goes either high or low okay or rather the uh, whenever the output of the flip-flop needs to change to high or low the time that it takes will be determined by the capacitance of gate C1, right? So if I assume that this has a capacitance C1, this has C2 and this is C3, then the delay of the flip-flop is actually the one that's going to be determined by C1 okay? because it has to drive gate D1, okay? In this case, the flip-flop output is also connected to some other gate, which means its actual delay will be even more and so on, right? Those are secondary issues. I'm going to leave those aside for now. And as a simplifying assumption, we'll simply say that the delay along the critical path is equal to the sum of the delays or the elements on that path. And in turn, that is proportional to the sum of the capacitance on the critical path. Okay, so when I say capacitance on the critical path, I'm basically referring to all the gates which are on that path, adding up their input capacitances and saying that overall delay is somehow going to be proportional to that sum. Okay. Now, on the other hand, if I want to look at the power consumption inside this overall circuit, right? Now, what is going to happen over here is once again, we saw that the power is proportional to capacitance, right? But there will also be some term over here, which is called the switching activity, right? And this switching activity factor, alpha subscript i, is a property of each individual gate, right? It's not a property of the gate type. So it's not like all AND gates have a given switching activity or anything like that. It depends on what are the kinds of inputs to the gate, okay? Depending on the inputs, the number of times that that particular gate will switch from zero to one or from one to zero will change. 
what that basically means is that the overall power inside the circuit is going to be some weighted average of the capacitances of all of the gates right where the weighting factor is at alpha i for the gate and you know that multiplied by v squared into f is basically what the power consumption is going to be okay so in other words the power when i look at it the capacitance that i'm looking at is the total capacitance present in the circuit whereas for critical path it is only the capacitance along the critical path okay so moving forward the power in digital circuits is given by this formula right and it is proportional to c into v, v squared into f right so that proportionality constant k is of course dependent on the switching activities of the capacitances and so on so in this the f is the operating frequency v is the operating voltage and the basic uh, thing that we need to keep in mind over here is whenever the v in v increases the time that is the delay decreases right and there is also another thing that is the threshold voltage vth and uh, the v has to be greater than vth for the circuit to operate in normal conditions okay and the k into c is basically the weighted sum of all the capacitances on the chip more toggling it has higher weightage okay all right so with all of that in mind right now i'm going to look at some a couple of small examples of circuits right toy examples and see how we can sort of play around with this power consumption right and keep in mind that i am not, the discussion that i'm bringing in now is in very much in the context of signal processing circuits why is that important because i'm going to assume that the rate right this t that i have over here the clock period the uh, interval that i need uh, to process samples at is determined by some physical requirement like for example audio sampling i would say that you know i need to sample at at least 48 kilohertz but you know need not be anything more than that right so if i write down the expression for this t the time period it is some constant k1 into 2c so this 2c is basically the total capacitance along the critical path as i have marked over here so k1 into 2c into v divided by v minus vt the whole square okay so what is this k1 that is some technology dependent factor and this into v divided by v minus vt the whole square depends you know that expression is true in relatively old technologies what i mean by that is it is strictly true only for long channel transistors where the saturation current goes as v minus vt the whole square right modern short channel transistors typically don't have that equation uh, they would have some you know a, a less of parameter but uh, less of an effect but the bottom line is that ultimately you will still find that the propagation delay decreases with higher voltage okay so increasing the operating voltage will still result in faster switching in general that is true even now right it may not go exactly as this expression that we have over here now the power consumption on the other hand is some other constant k2 okay i have sort of clubbed all that uh, switching activity weighting factors and so on everything into one constant factor k2 and the total capacitance present in the circuit is 2c right the same exactly the same capacitance as is there on the critical path because there are only two nodes over here and uh, that into v squared into f okay so that is the power so now let's assume that i'm you know trying to pipeline this circuit how would i pipeline it i would essentially insert a register right which i have marked in green over here and by inserting that register the critical path now becomes proportional to c rather than 2c right so if i look at this this critical path now becomes proportional to c right and, and what that means is i can now basically replace that expression over there t uh, as k1 into c into v divided by v minus vt the whole square okay now you can probably like you know if you think about it you'll realize that that's not strictly true because after all the the register itself will have a certain capacitance associated with it okay so the actual critical path is going to be proportional to 
this C plus the register capacitance, right? But I'm going to assume that this is negligible, right? I'm neglecting it. Is it actually negligible or not? Depends on the circuit that you have, okay? So, right, so what does this mean? Now, the question becomes, I have on the right hand side, you can see this figure, which basically shows the relationship between T and B, right? And what I'm saying is, you know, I don't really care whether it exactly follows this K1 into C into B by B minus VT the whole square. All that I'm interested in is it does have the sort of decreasing trend with increasing B, okay? And I have some target T, right? So T op is basically the operating time period which is the inverse of the operating frequency, the target frequency, right? This is basically my target. This is what I want to achieve. And what I'm saying is the red line basically shows that in order with this curve, right, for a 2C capacitance for the critical path, in order to get that T op, uh, T op I need to operate at this V op, which has been marked on the curve. Okay. Now, what happens when the capacitance on the critical path decreases? this whole curve sort of shifts down okay and what i have as a result is a new operating voltage right now what does this mean it basically means that in order to get the same target operating sample interval right i can get it at a lower operating voltage right what does this in turn mean it means that as far as the power consumption is concerned, right? What do I have? The original capacitance is 2C plus the register cap, which I have anyway neglected, right? So it is almost unchanged. So the power capacitance is almost the same. The original circuit therefore had a pipeline capacitance of 2C. Let's say, you know, as an example, that it operated at 1.8 volts with a threshold voltage of 0.4 volts, okay? This means that the T is going to be given by this expression, P is going to be given by the corresponding other expression. For the new circuit, what I have is the pipeline capacitance is now close to C. I'm going to assume it is C itself. And the question I want to ask is, what should my V op be so that I get the same value of T, right? I can write out the equation like this. I can basically say K1 into 2C, the, you know, the original time is equal to the new time, which is K1 into C into V divided by V minus 0 0.4 the whole square. Okay. K1 and C will cancel out, which means that, you know, you will get a nice quadratic equation in V, which you can solve. Alternatively, if you don't believe this, you know, quadratic expression, you just go graphical, right? And read off the value of operating value of V from the plot that I showed earlier. In this case, you know, a V operating value of around 1.2 volts turns out that it will satisfy my frequency requirement, the T, which in turn means that the T nu is going to be very close to T, approximately equal to T, but the power now becomes K2, the same 2C because the total capacitance has not changed, but now into 1.2 squared into the same operating frequency because I don't want the circuit to run faster. This is a case where I'm not using pipelining to make the circuit run fast. Right? I'm, because of the fact that I was able to apply pipelining, what I'm saying is I can now operate at a reduced voltage and I can end up saving power. Okay. So this is how pipelining, for example, can be used in order to reduce power. Now, obviously there are a number of catches over here, right? One of them is the fact that uh, I have, you know, just assumed the sort of quadratic expression for the current. That's not strictly true. Still, as long as you have this kind of behavior, right, as long as this plot of T versus V shows a decreasing trend, and when you reduce the capacitance, you know, it shifts to the bottom left, automatically it means that I will be able to get the same T at a lower operating voltage. So definitely I will be able to see some reduction. Yeah. So that is one thing. How much reduction will I see is a bit of a question mark. It may not be as much as, and in other words, this expression that I've got over here is probably overly optimistic. But the second thing is, I've also neglected the register capacitance, right? What that in turn means is that if I have 
if I try, you know, if I overdo this pipelining, that is, I try putting in registers in too many places, I'll probably get to a point where the pipeline capacitance is more than the actual circuit capacitance, right? Especially because, I mean, those of you who have done ASIC design, you would know that, you know, a typical combinational NAND gate, for example, is far smaller, possibly even like 10 times smaller than a flip-flop, okay? So, uh, at least like, you know, three to five times is the minimum that I can expect to see a uh, flip-flop in comparison to a, something like a NAND gate, okay? So, unless I have a significant chunk of combinational logic that I am sort of able to uh, reduce in, uh, or rather, you know, cut by using this pipelining, I'm not really going to benefit too much. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to apply almost the same concept, right? I've just redrawn the figure over here. But now what I'm going to do is use parallelism instead of pipeline. Okay. And what happens when I do parallelism? What you can see over here is the left hand side right before the demultiplexer and the right hand side after the multiplexer both are operating with a sample interval or a basically a clock frequency clock interval of t but because i have done this parallelism i am effectively saying that the path in between right the parts marked with the c's the capacitance is operating with a sample interval of 2t okay in other words it can operate at half the frequency of the previous one and still get the same throughput because after all I have two pieces of hardware doing the same computation. What does that mean? The critical path is the same as before. Now the new T, right? My target is now two times the original T and that needs to be equal to K1 into 2C into V by V minus VT the whole square. Once again, if I do the math, right, I'll find that V equal to 1.2 gets me pretty close to the expression that I want. Now, on the other hand, look at the power consumption. The new power consumption actually is what is the total capacitance in the circuit? I have doubled the amount of hardware. So the actual amount of capacitance in the circuit has doubled. It has gone from 2C to 4C. But the difference is that that double capacitance is operating only at half the original frequency, right? So part of that gets offset. And the important thing that remains is this is where I get my power reduction. Okay. So once again, just like in the case of pipelining, I can use parallelism also in order to get a reduction in power. Are there any catches over here? Yes. Similar to the case of pipelining, I need to add the multiplexers, right? The multiplexers themselves have capacitance associated with them. They occupy area. I uh, you know, need to route wires to like, I mean, I've effectively doubled my area, right? Even in the previous case, I mean, though not doubling, I will increase the area because I'm adding pipeline registers, right? Whereas over here, I'm clearly at least doubling, more than double because, you know, I also have multiplexers and so on. Okay. So in this way, what we can see is, yes, there is a potential for power reduction. The numbers that I've put over here are very optimistic, right? Giving you a picture that you can get like dramatic, like 2x power reduction or even more than that. In reality, you could still get fairly significant power reduction. 